Hello, welcome, my name is Robert Mazurek, and welcome to the Just Enough Battery channel. There will be cutting, even slicing of the battery, but in the sense of actually tearing apart this plastic casing in this episode. We will be freezing, charging, discharging, etc. So I will take my revenge very, very thoroughly on the lithium iron phosphate battery with heating mats, with a communication system based on Bluetooth, and with a capacity of 100 AA. First, I want to make sure that there is indeed 100 AH and whether one of our suppliers will maintain a reasonably solid quality. We already have a manufacturer that provides us with great reliability and excellent quality of these batteries, and we are satisfied. However, there are also questions from your side about whether we can propose any cheaper solutions for a few hundred, and we are looking for something like that. It turned out that our AGM battery supplier for cyclic work also launched a production line for lithium iron phosphate batteries some time ago, and after these testing periods, they are ready to start mass production, which they have already begun, selling quite a lot of them. And we are talking Jason, the person we are communicating with. They offered to send us a few batteries so that we can test them properly. As a result, one battery is undergoing long-term testing, where it is charged, discharged, charged and discharged again. He wants to see if there will be a capacity loss effect. The second battery, on the other hand, underwent 10 charging and discharging cycles. And I will tell you in this episode what I think about this battery. Take a look. The battery arrived to us with a voltage of 13.99V and a state of charge SOC level of 49%, as indicated by the application. I couldn't resist connecting the Git to quickly check the battery. At a voltage of 13.18V and a 1.01V difference between the application and the Git, it showed a SOC of 100%, 969 amperes of cranking current and an internal resistance of 3.2 milliohms. From all these parameters, the voltage and resistance can be utilized from this measurement with GITI. Because GIT is prepared for lead-acid batteries with liquid electrolyte, AGM, and gel. On the other hand, the algorithm for lithium batteries is more of a stage for a product that will be called GIT2 and will likely be a smaller component connected to the battery while the rest will transition to the application to significantly minimize production costs and make the price of Git2 rather three-digit than at the moment, approaching nearly 2500 PLN. Although I believe that if someone runs a workshop and needs a device that checks the alternator, starter, battery and many other things, there has already been a lot said about Git. Let's skip that. The battery was at 49% according to the application, so it needed to be recharged. To do this much faster, I used two Coulon 720 chargers for the charging. Since one generates about 16 amperes, and the other about 16 amperes, I assume that at such a peak moment I could achieve even up to 30 amperes of starting current. And once I had that battery fully charged, I had no choice but to use my friend, the Alpha Butter Pro, to permanently discharge this battery. With the only difference that for those of you who do not like Alpha Bata and have issues with it, as it estimates things in its own way, I decided to check this in terms of actual time, multiply by 25 amperes, and see what the capacity is, without taking any coefficients into account. Clean amperes, clean minutes, how much does that give? And here you can see what the graph of the first discharge looks like. The battery discharges for 242 minutes, which is 4 hours, and 2 minutes. If we multiply this by 25 amperes, we find that the capacity of this lithium-ion phosphate battery is 101 ampere hours. I won't be a magician and I won't hide anything here. In test number 2, this battery will also discharge for 242 minutes, which translates to 101 amp hours. And now, after the third charge, I was tempted to check whether the BMS of this device, overloaded to 200 amperes, would disconnect the ability to draw such a large current from this battery, because this is a BMS that allows for temporary overload. However, it should disconnect. I used the Lawanda B200 to conduct this test, and I loaded this battery with over 200A during such a short test, and already at the 10 second mark, the BMS disconnected the ability to discharge this battery. The protection is functioning. A temporary overload is possible. 
meaning that it is temporarily possible to draw more from this battery than the BMS allows for continuous operation. This continuous work is 100 amperes. In fact, we checked it to be 130 at one point. If it has some reasonable protection, I will also check to ensure that after these two years, this parameter is still maintained. However, the 200 amperes allowed for overload for 10 seconds. It's actually quite nice information, and I didn't recharge this battery, and in the third capacity test, this battery discharged two minutes shorter. 240 minutes, which is exactly four hours, multiplied by 25 amperes, means that in the third test, this capacity came out to be one ampere hour less, totaling 100 ampere hours. In test number four, there were also 242 minutes and 101 R. Uh. In test number five, 242 minutes, 101 R. Uh. In test number six, 242 minutes also appeared. In test seven, eight, and nine, the same. In the 10th test, 229 minutes were recorded, and this capacity was estimated at 95.4 R, uh, 95.4 A. And why did this actually happen? It really happened because I placed the discharge battery in the freezer. The temperature in the freezer is about minus 25 degrees. The lithium iron phosphate cells reach temperatures of nearly minus 21 degrees. I then connected the clip, set the voltage to 14.5V or 14.6V16A and divided the material somewhere. Either I didn't start recording or something else. However, it didn't start with those parameters. It started with parameters of just under 14V and 3.7A, 14V and 3.7A. And then the blockage occurred, which you will see shortly. The ability to charge the battery was blocked and the coulomb was providing approximately 54 to 55 W, meaning that the heating mats in this battery consume about 55 W's of electrical energy during their operation, and now, here's how it looked. Listen, we are already 30 minutes in. At 17 to 20, I connected the charger, or listen, the UTP chat system, connected. At this moment, the temperature is 10.8 degrees. So the mats managed to heat up by approximately 10 degrees in half an hour. We will see how long it takes for the mats to heat the battery to a temperature at which it can start charging. And we are approaching the hour since the charger has been connected to the Life Pure 4 battery located in the battery storage. Look, the temperature is minus 4.3 degrees Celsius. For an hour, an hour, and we raised it over 15 degrees up. And we are waiting for the moment when the charging begins. We wait patiently. After approximately 1 hour and 25 minutes, we already have a 0 0.5 degree Celsius increase on the cells, which this temperature sensor is recording. It is already 0 0.6 degrees Celsius above zero. Now we are waiting for the moment when the charging option will switch. So that we know exactly what temperature it is, at what temperature. This model together with this manufacturer, has established that once you reach XYZ degrees, then I will allow you to charge. Well, listen, it happened, it started. I was recording an episode and I didn't manage to notice that moment. But it's approximately about 2.5 degrees Celsius, because I checked when it was 2.3 and the battery couldn't be charged yet. However, at 2.5 degrees Celsius above zero, the charging began. The battery is still in the freezer, and I don't intend to take it out from there. Let's record this since it's recording all the time. Look, it's been in the freezer the whole time, and it's charging continuously. I am closing the freezer here. This is what the charging parameters look like. At the moment, it is charging at a voltage of 13.8V and 13.6V. 13.8V and 13.6A, Ampera, the target values, this charger achieves no, but when the battery was already charged and was still sitting in that freezer, I decided not to let it go. I connected the Alpha Beta Pro and then simply let it just evaluate the capacity of the battery sitting there in the freezer. But in the case of lithium iron phosphate cells, discharging at these negative temperatures generally does not hinder the battery at all. Look at the discharge time of this battery that was in the freezer at minus 25 degrees, which is 229 minutes. When converted to capacity, a simple calculation of minutes times amperes gives us a capacity of 95.4 AH. 
So, with the difference from 20 degrees to minus 25 degrees, which is a 45 degree difference between the conditions in which this battery was tested at a positive temperature in the lab versus what was in the freezer at minus 25 degrees, there is a 45 degree drop in temperature. However, the battery lost only 5.5% of its capacity. This is in contrast to lead acid batteries, which significantly lose capacity below zero. In tests I conducted many times at minus 25 degrees, as shown in videos on the channel from about two to three years ago, most batteries, when connected to 25A, literally did not start and immediately disconnected, including the Alpha Butter Pro. Very few, two batteries were able to start and deliver some capacity. But those were really trace amounts, I don't remember, it might have been 20, maybe 30% of that capacity. For those of you who are viewers, I am posting detailed links to these experiments there. I also intend to put the deep discharge battery, our R1 NRG, in the freezer at minus 25 degrees. It should also be shown that charging a frozen battery is a very, very, very bad idea because it slows down the electrochemical processes inside to the point where it is practically, you know, impossible to charge it. So. Listen, now that we have discussed all these things, I will show you that this battery has also been cut open, and you can see how it looked from the inside. The magic of cinema is such that I wouldn't have managed without Vadim. Thank you, Vadim. Vadim, show us what we will find inside. I can already see some sponges taken out. Nice. Try to take it out. I'll hold it for you. Because Vadim already took it out earlier and disassembled it. However, to see the magic, of cinema, you need to see what it looks like inside. Oh, this is already heavy, you know. Yes, terribly. It must be the glue on these tapes. Let's move this. All right, good. And now take a look. At the top, we have the BMS. Wadunya, peel this off for me. Nothing happened. These are protective sponges for the spacers. And now inside we have four cells. One, two, three, four. You have already seen the capacity of the cells. Connected in series, they have 100A in each of the 10 tests. Besides that one, but I explained in the video why, I wanted to check the starting capability of this battery, and I had drained it a bit beforehand. Check the test. What parameters does the BMS have? Will we be able to see? Because we have four, one, two, three, four. So we have a BMS that can handle up to four cells. The BMS is 100 amperes, and here is the number four, do you see? Here is a four cell setup, which is 100 amperes. Overall, there wouldn't be anything interesting about these cells. All the cells look identical. In a moment, we will play around with the QR codes and see what these QR codes suggest to us. Now take a look at how this manufacturer has solved the heating mats. You can see that there is a thicker mat placed between cell number one and cell number two. This is not just a flimsy cover, it's a solid piece. Look, it's been done so thoroughly and solidly. Here we have Vadim measuring. By the way, he took a caliper with him. There is also something between cell number 3 and 4. And at the moment when we are below zero and this battery wants to charge, you will measure the distance between them. But that's not a bad idea either. How much did it come out to 2 millimeters? About 2 millimeters. And at the moment when we have a temperature below zero and this battery wants to charge, the current will first flow to those mats. Here you can see the protruding flags. Only when these mats heat the cells to a temperature above 5 degrees will the current be able to flow to charge the individual cells. As you can see, the cells are not screwed. These are factory welded cells. Here is the weld. Vadim, let's remove those sponges as well. These are all protective sponges to keep the cells from moving around. I wanted to say a nasty proverb, but I'll skip that because a good number of you are sensitive people on the channel and I don't want to offend you here. Oh, all right, we have that. So this is what the overall aesthetics of this cell look like. As I mentioned, we will be checking the QR codes shortly. The cells look nice. They are decently welded and twisted with solid cables. No issues here, Vadim. We've disassembled more than one battery. One could say that this one looks fairly solid. What is your opinion? It looks very nice design-wise, from what I've seen in the tests. It also performs well. It performs very nicely. So listen, 
It might turn out that we found a nice manufacturer with decent products. And the price will definitely be more favorable as well. Miesco, say hello nicely to the viewers while you're over there. Good morning. Now let's return to the studio. As far as I'm really concerned, this battery is a really good battery. In a sense, it neither impressed me with any super parameters nor surprised me with poor quality. The cells are quite nice, quite decent. By the way, you saw how I tested that 24 volt queen not long ago or something like that. It's 99% in the first, 97% in the second, and 95% in the third. From the very beginning, this capacity has been declining, but it maintains a nice capacity, meaning the quality of these cells looks quite good. The BMS is functioning, it has protection, and this battery is well made. Personally, I don't have any major comments here. And we will probably move on to discussions with this manufacturer about the pricing. If you enjoyed the episode, you can give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, then it seems you don't want to subscribe and I won't urge you to do so. That's all. If you find yourselves in Szczecin, Grafinska 106 is a nice place where you can drop in for a coffee. There is no obligation to buy anything during your visit. You can just stop by and enjoy a coffee. If we meet, we can high-five and chat for a bit. I'm always available. Remember to ask the guys to reach out to me. Don't wait for me to come out and move around the company, because I work in this part at home inside. I rarely come out into the yard, because I have quite a lot of work behind the scenes. That's it. Take care. Sending warm regards from Szczecin. Bye.